2020 awful cases of computer illiteracy according to reddit number 20 i worked with a woman who would tell me her web page was wrong she didn't have a web page it took me a while to figure out that she meant her desktop display <laughs> okay her excuse I can't remember all those terms. You just have to know what I call stuff. <laughs> I had to do support for the whole office. She thought it was perfectly reasonable that I should learn 12 different names for common computer things instead of her having to learn the correct ones. She was also a bitch, but uh, she's, she's also dead now. I don't care. <laughs> I like this. Come on now. She's also dead now. If I promise to learn your terms, will you let me live? <laughs> oh, Kyle, you're just having a jolly old. Yeah, you know, the list don't normally start off in a way that make me go, no, no that's pretty nice. Yeah, I'm sure this whole list is going to be fucking cringeworthy. Just, just a nightmare for people who are savvy in anything technological. Which is a song by Daft Punk by it. Okay, that's enough. Uh, I've mentioned, no, says number 19. I went back to college last year and I am stunned by the computer illiteracy of some of these kids in their late teens and early 20s. Yeah, I'm an ex IT person, but I adapted to this life. Okay. Okay. You were born into it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not just talking about knowing how to use, let alone create templates in Word, or how to save files on a thumb drive or back up your data, though that's crazy too. Or, or no, there are some other browsers besides, wow dude, that's, that's fucking crazy. There aren't kids running around using Explorer unless they're like basic, you know, privileged white kids. Let's be real. Let's be real. How basic you live in your life where you don't know that there are browsers other than like Safari and uh, Explorer. Come on now. You, they don't exist, baby. <laughs> you got to be real basic. You got to you got to have that that golden spoon in your mouth so hard that you were born with that that you just can't even see. You can't even see past the, you know, the part of the spoon that you grab with your hand. Unless you, unless you're, you know, you're so rich that you grab the actual, the, the spoon part that you're supposed to, and then you, you use the hand part to, to put stuff in your mouth. Man, that is something that I want stripes to draw. At any rate, um, I told one person that their list of citations needs to be alphabetical. And rather than mark it and drag it and drop it, they started t retyping it. Okay heck a lot of them didn't know how to cut and paste in general i don't know man i've seen a i've seen people who didn't know you can hold down shift to get an uppercase letter they'd activate caps lock hit the letter deactivate caps lock and one person one person would write entire essays on paper then type them in then if they needed to edit it they do it on the original paper version and then type the entire thing back in from scratch. You're fucking joking. I'm sorry. This isn't real life. It must be fantasy. Caught in a landslide. No escape from illiteracy. Open your eyes. That's enough. Number 18. One time I heard my dad cursing at his computer in the basement. It started with single word shits and dammits and slowly progressed into rage. Okay. Finally, with a tone of desperation, he called for my help. I walked in. I was working and then it just disappeared and I can't get it back, he explained. His hands moved wildly from me to the screen to the sky. It's gone. <laughs> As he went on, I stooped over with the mouse and dragged up the window that apparently had been moved and was peeking just above the taskbar. He facepalmed and gave me a light jab on the shoulder in appreciation. What would I do without you? I love my dad, but I fear for him now that I live on my own. It's gone. And he's gesturing to the sky. I love that. 
slowly progressed itself into a rage. What would I do without you? Rage against the machine. Ha 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 ha. Come on, guys. Number 17. My mom tried to download Uber and accidentally registered herself as a driver. That's that's adorable. Somebody says this amuses me on many levels. All right, I got the Uber. <laughs> Mom, you are the Uber. Oh, no. Number 16. Back in the days of MS-DOS and the good old Windows 3.1, my uncle picked up a new computer, a powerhouse at the time. He'd never had a PC. He'd been a Commodore 64 kind of guy for a long time. Anyway, I visited my grandparents where he lived, and he showed me his computer. I was in awe. I was so good, or it was so good compared to my own. I played a game of strife, and after that, I went out to play. Later that day, I, I'm asked by my grandmother, what did you do to your uncle's computer? I don't know what she's talking about, and I go to talk to him. He's mad. The thing won't boot. I broke it. I get it to boot and check out the hard drive. It's in shambles. I ask, what were you doing when it stopped working? Uh, deleting files you put on there. I don't need your garbage on my machine. He'd been deleting random files from the operating system until it stopped working. Long story short, in one day, I reinstalled DOS and Windows on the thing six times. Yes, he kept doing it and wouldn't listen when I told him he couldn't just do that. I never touched his PC again after that. Well... He still brings up the time I broke his new computer. Well, old people stupid. Like, move on. You know what I'm talking about? Move the fuck on. Somebody responds, that would be met with, no, you broke your computer six times and I fixed it for you for free every time it came up. Public shaming is the only viable tool here. Again, to be completely honest, public shaming is the only thing that's going to keep a lot of assholes in check these days. The thing is, I'm working on this uh, series where, unfortunately... I think, I think back then, it was much more difficult to shame people because it's so easy to cover shit up, especially with the mainstream media being the only outlet for most things. So they basically really did have a light switch as far as, uh, you know, what people consume and what people don't. So it wasn't really even like something in the way of a cover up back then. It was simply just like them just flipping the light switch off or turning off the faucet, so to speak. And, you know, if it's not there, then it almost doesn't exist. Given a, even even nowadays, you know what I mean? A plane can pop out of the sky and go missing. And as long as it's not talked about too much, people will forget in a small amount of time. But like back then, you know, it, uh, man, I, I wanted to do this video. I was asking uh, Emmy to write me a script about uh, Bayer Pharmaceuticals and how they like knowingly, um, deliberately gave out medication that was tainted with AIDS and they were giving people AIDS. And I want to do something about that. There's another one about these cops that following Hurricane Katrina got up on a bridge and just started opening fire on civilians. Like this shit happened. This shit happened and people don't know about it and people have forgotten about it because it's kind of suppressed. But like, fuck me. You know what I mean? The only thing keeping a lot of assholes from being mega assholes is the idea that people would stand up and go, no, nigga, you can't fucking do that. Because if everybody's just like, oh, well, you know what? It, it is what it is, you know, and they roll over because they figure there's nothing they can do about it. Then people will keep pushing those boundaries and it's unacceptable. But we're just having a, we're just on a happy-go-lucky computer literacy list. What am I talking about, right? <laughs> Number 15. Coworkers asked me to turn the clicking sound off on her keyboard. She thought that the sound keys make, the sound keys make when you type on the computer was the sound effect similar to when you type on a cell phone. Nope. It was her long fake nails making the keys clack. She refused to believe me, so I told her to call tech support. No idea how they handled it. Lol. Look, these these this kind of stuff is starting to horrify me actually. Number 14, my dad 
Even though he has lived with a computer in his house for 25 years, he still says he's going to take a class just to teach him how to turn it on. What? I bought him an Apple TV and a 32-inch TV for his den so he could stop watching the news on my mom's TV in the living room. Y'all niggas better be rich. Why are you buying people Apple TVs when that thing's essentially a hard drive? Something tells me OP's not too tech savvy. Because even though Apple is pretty streamlined so that even a monkey could use this crap, there's so many other things that you could buy him that I would say are more effective than Apple TV. Which again, is essentially a hard drive. I have sat down for an hour, multiple times, repeating the steps to get him to Netflix. Wrote down each step, in depth, mind you. Even went as far as labeling every remote in the house so as to prevent any confusion. Still got to the same call I do, say, still got the same call I do every week. My Netflix is down again, you come fix it, pop. <laughs> what? When I get there to troubleshoot, I realize he has somehow hidden the Netflix app off the main menu of the Apple TV, and I had to go into settings and turn it back on. I barely, I barely knew how to do that. He could stumble through a computer and do more damage to it in five minutes than I could if I wanted to maliciously harm it. A response here reads, I think he just wants to spend more time with you. Yeah, he may be looking at them YouTube videos, how to sabotage a computer to get your kids to come. I'm kidding. Um, a response to the response says, yeah, someone once told me it's the only way he knows to relate to my generation. Regardless, I do it all over again and again, and I'll keep doing it, but I'll complain the whole way. Somebody responds, oh, here comes the perspective. In the first fucking five words, when my dad passed away, here we go. I went through my phone and found a bunch of voicemails I never deleted from him, most of which were him asking for help with his computer. I never thought I'd appreciate this technological caveman status until I got to hear his voice the day after he passed. And you can't help but laugh through the tears as he complains how Mozilla got back on my computer and I must have a virus. Let a few calls go to voicemail and save them. You'll be glad you did. I don't like that he ended it with this. He should have ended it with something more corny like, I wish I could come fix your computer now, Dad. I'll come fix it in heaven. You know, some shit like that. <laughs> some hokey bullshit that would be in the, um... Oh, man, like in a, you know, TV show. Okay, I, I genuinely just... I genuinely just stood up to stretch. Um, in case you're curious, uh, I did not get the chance to record a whole bunch of videos and then schedule them to uh, be released. So I'm actually recording this in Lakeland. And uh, yeah, I'm sitting in a chair, which is not how I normally record. Whatever, everything's different, whatever. What uh, Response to the response to the response says, I work as a software tester and have done so for almost 17 years. So I've become my family's de facto IT. Why would it matter? You know? Usually all you have to do is be born and then you're the IT guy. My dad says who had previously been a nuclear engineer. What Homer? Got skin cancer and got really sick. His dad, wow. Wow, that sucks. A few weeks before he would end up passing away, he called me while at work. <sighs> he calls and says, I have two emails. Okay, dad, what do you want to do with those emails? Delete them? No, I have two emails. Okay, dad, do you want to forward them? I can show you how to forward them. Okay, I have two emails. The tears silently streaming down my face at this point as I realized his former analytical mind that I had inherited was now ravaged by cancer. Oh my God. Getting through the rest of the day at work wasn't easy. Oh my God. I didn't expect it to take a fucking cancer turn 
and how his mind had been fucking lost to it. That's horrifying. I I picked this because I thought it'd be like a happy-go-lucky mom doesn't understand how to fucking turn some shit on and and it's too, you know, proud to YouTube it or some shit list. And here we go. We're in the monkey balls, you know. Dad comes in and he's like, wait a minute, what's all this stuff on my desktop? And he slips on a banana peel, you know. That's what I, that's what I wanted the whole list to be. And it's just like, and then the cancer took their brains. That sounds stupid, Kyle. You're an idiot. Number 13, a co-worker of mine, an older gentleman knew how to use Excel, but nothing else. When he needed to type up a document, instead of opening up a word processor, he would open up Excel. And just type his document. <laughs> and just type his document into one cell that he enlarged to the size of a piece of paper. Well, ain't that just precious? Somebody said, well, at least he's resourceful and able to problem solve this guy. He really likes to think exclusively inside the box. But he didn't write inside, but it would have rolled off the tongue better. Inside the bags. Inside the bags. Number 12. Customer call. Hi, my computer isn't working. Me. Okay. What happens when you try turning it on? Nothing. Can you check to see if it's plugged into the outlet? I don't know. It's, it's pretty dark back there. Can, uh... Can you turn on a light? Nah, man, the, uh, the power's out. Okay. <laughs> okay. Number 11, man. Took a physics course from a professor who got their PhD in biomechanical physics, i.e. how fast the cell moves or at what rate does the mitochondrial proteins work. Complicated stuff, to say the least. Science! One day, the professor was using PowerPoint for a lecture. The Adobe Update icon popped up and they had no idea how to resolve it. They restarted the machine and with five, within five minutes it popped up again. The entire class watched in amazement. As this professor struggled with the Adobe Update icon, the professor, the professor canceled class for IT to come in and fix the issue. Bing bong. Somebody responds and says, it's always amazing watching professors with years of training and knowledge in a specific field struggle with the simplest of problems. Somebody else said, right? It's not rational because hell, you have a PhD, you get exclusive AI study. What the fuck? Look, let's move on, man. I don't have time for this. Yeah, the window in which I have to record is closing so fast. You guys don't even know. Why am I even tempting fate when I need to just make it to the end? What if I have to stop before it's over? How unprofessional would that be? Kyle, unprofessional, making g g lists on my recreational YouTube channel where I never go off topic and told number nine, no, no, number 10. What's wrong with your nose? It's like filling up again. Oh no. The first email my dad sent me when I went away to college, and the first email he ever wrote didn't have any spaces in it. It was just one long word <laughs> dotted with occasional punctuation. He didn't know what the space bar was and thought the computer would just add the spaces automatically. It was hilariously adorable, and every time I think about it, I get a little sad. I didn't print it out and frame that email. Because he's dead. I'm kidding. We don't know that he's dead. Somebody else responds, the only way to teach an old person to type is to tell them that the keys are almost exactly like a typewriter, but you don't have to press as hard. That's an interesting note. Number nine, in recent memory, I can recall an instance where my mom had a recipe open in Chrome and wanted to show her a YouTube video. Okay, I wanted to show her a YouTube video. I opened up another tab in the browser and she got mad at me because she thought I deleted the recipe. You idiot. The response reads, just remember, she had to teach you how spoons work. That's crazy that I said that. It's crazy that I said that, right? Because earlier I made the joke about, you know, how the rich were born with the, the spoon in their mouth. And maybe, maybe they were so fucking, I don't know. 
I'm so sorry. Not oh. I'm so sorry, I just got into a fight with a snot monster and the only way to the only way to win the fight against him was to out Canadian him with apologies and this shit ain't funny. <laughs> just move on, man. Out Canadian him. What the hell? I opened up another uh, tab. You read this already. You read it already? Let's keep moving. Number eight. My dad asked me what time a company's website closed. Oh, that's so cute. I told him six and we'll take care of it tomorrow. <laughs> That's fucked up. There's actually a UK government website that you can only use during certain hours. I was amazed when I found that out. Okay. Yeah, but the UK's ass backwards. They just make up rules to have rules for the sake of rules. Rules, bro. Rules. You know how people are going to respect us? You got to have a lot of rules. Yeah, I respect the idea of that. Rules. Number seven. I work with a guy who for two months and countless visits from our RT guy claimed that his computer was still going slow. So the IT guy set a dead computer tower which isn't even plugged into anything next to the one that he was using. And now my coworker says it goes twice as, as fast. Is this an inside joke? <laughs> Somebody said it's called the PC bow effect. Shut up. It's like it's like the car joke, I'm guessing, you know? Where like the car is slow, so I put like a a, a stationary car next to it and now it goes twice as fast. Or it's almost like put painting an S on the side of a car so when 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 it goes by people will go look at that S car go. What? Number 6. My uncle has step-by-step -step instructions for uh, accessing his email, which is the only thing he does on his computer. Anytime he makes a mistake, he shuts down the computer and starts over. He also moves the mouse into position, takes his hand off completely, then pokes the button very carefully. Oh. I want him to say stuff like um, T minus five as he lowers his finger. Oh boy, I'm like checking things around me. You know, you have no idea. You have no idea. This is crazy. If you only knew. Number five. My mom seriously thinks she can only access email from the computer on which it was set up. She has created a new email address for each new computer she got. Oh. A response says, my grandmother flipped out when I showed her how to access her hotmail while on vacation in another state. She watched mesmerized as I showed her how one can log in from anywhere as long as you have the correct username and password. The following week, she sent a mass email to the family expressing her concerns about how nothing on the computer is safe. And I was able to hack into her computer from Florida. Okay. You must be that 4chan guy. Idiot. Not, not, ugh, I don't know, whatever. Number four, I worked in tech support in the mid-90s at a company, at a company where computers for admins and sales were a relatively new thing. So I have a million stories. Yeah, let's stick to one of those, okay, buddy? I got a call from an employee insisting her new tested mouse wasn't working. Went through all of the questions, is it plugged in, do you see the arrow on the screen, and could hear her clicking, so I knew she was at least doing something. I finally went to her desk and saw that she was using her mouse up against the monitor. Trying to click the things right on the screen, instead of understanding the mouse on the desk, cursor on the screen, set up. She ain't that far off, you know what I mean? Because the crazy thing is, is a lot of that innovation comes with, 
what a person wants to do, you know, for the longest time, people would see a screen and their hand would reach out and want to touch that screen. And this is why we can give a lot of our devices to kids now and they fucking get it because it just works the way that you look at it and, you know, want it to work. But for a while, we didn't have touch screens. And then one day people, we was like, you know what? We got to big out. We got to flip a lot of flubbles. Number three, I work as a tech support guy. No, I work as tech support. Where did the uh come in? At a university. So computer literacy keeps me employed. There's one professor. I've had to teach to right click on multiple occasions. Also, just last week, a woman, corporate client, called about a strange message on her computer. Outlook had detected she moved time zones and asked if she wanted her laptop to change times to reflect her new location. It's just asking me if I want to adjust your email to a new time zone since you're, you know, an hour earlier here. So I'll get my emails an hour earlier then? Some people really think computers are magic. What the fuck? Number two, two. number two. My grandfather, God bless him, in his late 70s, just learning how to use a computer. And he would enjoy spending an hour or so in the evenings getting creative using the paint app on his laptop. I was talking to him about replacing the ink in his printer as it was running low. Then a look of horror came over him and he leaned in closely and said, I've been using the paint app on my computer. How much ink have I been wasting? He thought he was using paint on his computer without printing and using up his ink. Bless him. <laughs> Somebody said, that's actually so adorable. Like, oh my gosh, it's like a little puppy. Fucking losers. Number one, I used to work as the tech guy in high school. Wait, is that like a clock going on? That's like a clock going off. I hope this has been loud enough for me. Yeah, I think it's fine. I think this is fine. Number one, I used to work as a tech guy in a high school. One day, the head teacher's secretary called me to reception because the fax machine wasn't working. I had a look at it and it seemed to work fine. So I asked her to show me what she was doing when the fault occurred. So she put the document in the slot, typed in the number, the machine whirred up and the document popped out the other side as normal you see she said no not really what's the problem she looked at me like i was a complete and utter moron snatched up the document and started waving it at me it's still here and that's why i had to explain to a grown woman that a fax machine isn't a teleportation device Okay. It wasn't as bad as we thought it might be. I'm sure some of us have scarier stories, you know? A, like, stories so bad that we'd probably get in trouble for telling them. Because, you know, people would be ashamed, apparently, of themselves if it got out. <laughs> There's nothing to say, though. I love you guys. Um, You know, I really tried to find something cooler to do here. But I just couldn't find anything genuinely interesting. It's ridiculous, really. A lot of them ridiculous. Yeah, but I'm talking about this dancing or bridge shooting thing. Is following Katrina. A whole bunch of like cops just went out and started killing people. Pretty nuts. Pretty nuts. But yeah, if I can get a script together, I'll do that. Um, how are you guys? I'm in uh, Lakeland. Hope you guys are doing well. And, um, I can't wait to, I don't know, get back and deal with you dudes and dudettes. Take it easy and stay safe. Love you.